Krishnan, Prime Minister Netanyahu has been here all week. Rather a long trip for the leader of a country at war, but it shows how important his relations with the American government are, and also with former President Donald Trump. The two men famously fell out after Mr. Netanyahu rang President Biden to congratulate him on winning the 2020 election. Of course, Mr. Trump has never accepted that Mr. Biden won that election. So today was an opportunity for Mr. Trump and Mr. Netanyahu to bury the hatchet. Protests have followed the Israeli Prime Minister wherever he's gone. Today in Florida, where he visited former US President Donald Trump. Pictures on Mr. Trump's social media feed suggest the encounter was warm. Unlike that with Vice President Kamala Harris yesterday, she made clear her reservations about the way Israel is prosecuting the war in Gaza. The images of dead children and desperate, hungry people fleeing for safety, sometimes displaced for the second, third or fourth time. We cannot look away in the face of these tragedies. We cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering, and I will not be silent. Now, President Biden has never spoken as sharply as that about the way Israel is prosecuting the war, and of course, nor has pre former President Trump. I think it's clear the Prime Minister Netanyahu will be hoping that it is Trump, not Harris, who wins the election in November. That, of course, is always assuming that he is still in office by then. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, here, Labour has dropped the Conservative government's plan to object to the International Criminal Court's application for an arrest warrant against Benjamin Netanyahu. The leading human rights lawyer, Geoffrey Robertson, was one of those who argued for the ICC's case to be allowed to continue. He joins me now. What difference does this make legally that Britain is now dropping the planned objection of the last government? Well, uh, you have to remember that Britain is looked up to what makes Britain, Great Britain great, is the fact that it abides by international law and is recognised as the best exponent of it. And so this decision today is not just morally right, it's legally right, because for some reason, uh, perhaps put up to it by America or Israel, the Sunak government made a rather quiet application to the International Criminal Court to argue that it couldn't prosecute any Israeli in Gaza uh, for some, for, because of a 1995 agreement, the Oslo Accords. And uh, this was a legal nonsense because of those accords are dead, because Karim Khan, who is the international court prosecutor, operates under international law and is not, uh, has done his own investigation and decided that these allegations against Mr. Netanyahu and his defense minister, namely of starving the population of Gaza, which is a serious war crime, and of bombing civilians knowing that he would kill them, and 40,000 of them almost have been uh, killed in that way. So they are the, the allegations, and Mr Khan has done an investigation, submitted them to seven distinguished judges, including Jewish judges, and they've told him that they are substantial, so he's going to present them. But the British government, for its one doesn't know why, has stepped in and wanted to argue that the case couldn't go ahead because of the yeah. old Oslo Accords. Right. So and so that, that's a hopeless argument because the International Court of Justice, which declares international law, said only last Friday that the Oslo Accords could not interfere or affect international justice in Gaza. OK, so, so can, I, can I just ask you, sorry to interrupt, but I just want to ask you... withdrawn them. What, what is the legal... I mean, we took great... You know, we, we asked Keir Starmer before the election, you know, what he would do if there was an arrest warrant issued, and he, mm. he didn't explicitly say that Netanyahu would be arrested, but he said he respects international law. I mean, is it, is it just a straightforward mm. case 
that if there is an arrest warrant, Britain will be obliged to arrest Netanyahu if he steps foot on British soil? Of course, that's why Putin did not dare to go to South Africa for the conference last year, because South Africa, like 122 other countries in the world, are members of the International Criminal Court and bound to honour their arrest warrant. So it goes uh, automatically that uh, if an arrest warrant is issued, and it's a big if, if because the court has yet to examine the evidence that the prosecutor has collected, but if they do and issue the warrant and it's followed by an indictment, then members have to oblige. And that's, uh, that was the case with Putin, and it will be the case with Mr Netanyahu if the case goes ahead. Geoffrey Robertson, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And, uh, and we should say, of course, that Israel denies war crimes and has condemned the action at the ICC.